sellers, it's Suzanne and welcome back to another eBay Supersize Sales Things That Sold for $100 or More. These sales are taken from my Facebook group of 35,000 sellers. You can find the link to that below the video if you're not a member. And every Monday we post what we found, where we found it, how much it sold for, and tell a little backstory about the item if there is one. So that's where these sales are coming from. These are made by real people, real sellers, just like you. And in this video, we look at the items that sold for $100 or more. So what I like to call the heavy hitters. Today's date is May 12th, 2020. These sales were taken from the 1st up until the 12th from those Money Making Monday posts in my Facebook group. So let's get started with the honorable mentions. We've got Jerry Ann who bought in a lot of books of 15 for $3 at an estate sale, so not much into it. Sold for $90 plus shipping after being listed for about a month. This is a Super Bowl football program from 1974, so pretty much just some old paper. And this sold for $90. Kay said, I love selling holiday stuff. Picked up this treasure for $5.99 at my local Goodwill on what feels like my last treasure hunting adventure. Took three months to sell. This sold for $95 and I'm including this one here because it's a Halloween item. Lemax Spooky Town Dead Man's Mine Halloween Animated Lighted from 2006. So we are in May and Halloween things are selling. I will never stop encouraging you to list things year round. It does not matter what the season is. If you have it, list it. It can sell any time of year. Okay, Ken. I had to include this one from Ken because he had a, uh, a funny comment. He paid a dollar for this, sold for $95.71, found this in a bag of cheap jewelry at Goodwill. Took two months to sell after rejecting emotional blackmail lowball offers during this quarantine. A dollar, sold for $95.71. It is a vintage Burberry Novacek background uh, watch. And I just love how he has coined a new phrase for us emotional blackmail lowball offers I know I've received them and I'm sure you have too so leave a comment below <laughs> if you like that term because I think we're gonna start using it because it describes the situation perfectly Sue sold this cup and saucer. It was given to her from a friend in March, so zero dollars. Listed for three weeks, oh I'm sorry, listed for six weeks and sold both sets to the same buyer for $99.94 plus shipping. So it was two cups and two saucers, but given to her for free. And look, it's so plain. It's just white with a very delicate scalloped edge. Very pretty, but very plain. So something you might skip over at a garage sale or a thrift store because it's not super colorful, it's not antique, it's just uh, very clean and conservative looking, but still it was free to her and she sold it for just under $100. Okay, we've got Alona. Found these Starbucks mugs at my local Goodwill for about $8. Took four months to sell. So we've got four mugs here. They are the Starbucks You Are Here collection. She paid $8. They sold for $99.95 plus shipping. Great sale. Crystal paid $20 at an online auction. Sold in about a month. Buyer paid shipping. This is a Wagons of the Old West Vintage 1966 Wagon Masters Wood Model Kit. Sold for $99.99 plus shipping. 
and we've got Delin who said puzzles are selling like crazy a friend of mine gave me about 50 puzzles to sell and they have been flying out the door this lot of 11 Charles Wysocki puzzles sold for $99.99 in just a couple of hours this is only my second super sale so congratulations for getting in the video a second time and yes people are doing puzzles now so it doesn't matter if they've been worked or not she actually commented Delyn did below and said I actually don't count the pieces or put them together I trusted my friend who said they threw out any puzzles with missing pieces however I do not state in the listing the word complete or no pieces missing just to be safe I plan to refund anyone who ends up with an incomplete puzzle. And just a note on that, even puzzles that are brand new and sealed can be missing pieces or have extra pieces. This has happened to me. I used to do puzzles with my kids all the time. Every summer I would set one up on the kitchen table because when they started saying they were bored, then they got directed to go work on the puzzle. And we did have new ones that are missing pieces. So you don't have to put them together unless you just like doing that. What I put in my listings is puzzle has not been assembled. We do not know if all the pieces are present. Even if it's sealed, pieces may be missing. And people don't care. Sometimes they just want an activity and they don't care if it's missing pieces. It's all about working the puzzle and not ending up with something that they're going to frame. So some buyers are totally okay with that. Other ones will come back and complain that pieces were missing. But um, just put that disclaimer in your listing that you didn't work it, you don't know, or you didn't count the pieces and go with it. It will still sell. Okay, Margie, her first $100 sale. Congratulations. She paid $9 at Goodwill for three boxes of hair color. Sold for offer of $100 plus shipping in four days. And there you can see Clairol Loving Care Natural Instincts, $100 plus shipping. And I had a feeling this was going to happen back when everything started closing and hair salons were closing that people were going to get very concerned about their hair color. I actually went on Amazon and bought some of that spray on root color. As soon as salons started closing, I bought that to have on hand because, you know, I'm one of those people. I like to, uh, I like to get my hair colored. So, um, if you have any of this kind of stuff laying around the house and you're not going to use it, you can sell it for quite a nice price right now. This is not an essential item. This is a frill. This is a option. It's not essential, but you can make good money on that if you have any just laying around your house or if you see it on clearance somewhere like at the grocery store, um, check that out because this is a hot item right now. Okay, Tammy, this was free to her. Dad was cleaning out shop, took six months to sell, sold for $100 plus shipping. It is, looks like something for a boat. Yes, it's um, a part for a motor for a motorboat. So 100 bucks, it was just laying around and she got it listed and got it sold. Okay, on to Jessica. And I was actually going to rename this episode the Jessica Rice Show because we're going to be seeing a lot of things from her in this video. She did very well this month. This is a vintage 70s dress. She found it for $4, sold it for 100 Then we've got Kimberly who sold her own knee brace from her knee replacement surgery didn't need it anymore insurance paid for it so it was all profit it was only listed for two weeks this is one of those Don Joy knee braces it's hinged so if that's you check it out you may be able to pick up some quick cash selling something you don't need anymore left over from your knee replacement surgery okay we've got Kim Smith who paid $21.64 at Goodwill it was listed for about 10 months 
finally sold for $100. Allen Edmonds Honors Collection Wingtip uh, Black and White Men's Shoes. $100 plus shipping and she paid $21.64. Okay, Cheryl. I don't remember if I shared this one already. Um, I don't think you did, Cheryl. My apologies if it's a repeat. I sold this antique necklace on consignment for a friend. Listed high as this one is prettier than comps I saw. Rejected a few low offers. Sold for best offer of $101 plus shipping. And this is an antique Victorian 10 carat bow drop necklace. Very pretty. And she didn't say what she paid for it, but... I can imagine it wasn't very much because Cheryl posts all the time, but sold it for $101. Dawn, this was given to me a few years ago, pulled it from my death shed, took best offer of $105 as it had a few holes that need repair. And this is a iconic vintage gold lame and pink flower wide leg jumpsuit. Very retro. $105 for that. Julie listed this snap-on bolt puller set from my husband's garage. Took about five months to sell on best offer of $105. So I'm guessing her cost was zero since it was something they already had around their house. So nice sale on something that hopefully he wasn't using and didn't need anymore. <laughs> Casey, I'm counting on this being a good summer for the cycling category. Paid $15 each and just sold the last one after being listed for more than six months. With no surprise, it didn't sell over the winter. Sold for $109.95. And this is a pair of cycling bib shorts. Okay, Eileen, who I'm going to nickname the book lady because she does so well with books and in sets and she has the patience to put the sets together which um, I would not have the patience for that but it works for her so she has self-proclaimed thousands of books in her house so from now on Eileen I'm just gonna call you the book lady <laughs> she said I spent about a year building this book lot of magic treehouse books and have about thirty dollars into the lot sold for full asking price of $110 plus shipping took six weeks to sell and I know she's been working on this book lot because she mentioned this when we did our interview at least six months ago so it pays to have patience and keep looking for the books to complete the lot because she only had $30 in this and sold it for $110 Aaron paid $2 for this item, sold it in a couple of months. This is a vintage mid-century modern optic ribbed glass swag lamp. Very cool, very retro looking. We had one of these in my house growing up. I was born in 1966, so I was right there smack in the middle of the 70s with the swag lamps and the shag carpet and the avocado green and harvest gold stuff in our house so yeah that's that's pretty retro two dollars sold for 110 and now we've got shannon with a retro item as well free from a curb alert vintage 90s infinity mirror sold in 24 hours for best offer of 110 dollars this was a beast to pack yes i can imagine that would but that is a really cool item, Infinity Mirror. Kimberly, $4 from Goodwill, lots of watchers and offers sent, but sold for full price in a month, which was $111. This is a JVC CD disc changer player, so a CD player. $4 sold for $111. Janae, Paid $3 at a garage sale. This was sitting in my death pile for a year. Sold on a seven-day auction. Another hair item, but this one for animal grooming. An Oster Golden 2-Speed Animal Grooming Clippers. 
$112.50. She only paid $3 and it took seven days, uh, seven day auction to sell it. So great flip there. Okay, Rachel listed this on Saturday afternoon and it sold within a couple of hours. Bought it for $4.99 at Goodwill not long before the shutdown. This is a vintage 1993 Fisher Price loving family dream house. So bought it for five bucks at Goodwill, sold it for 115. And now we've got Nicole who sold a lot of cashmere sweaters for uh, cutter or upcycle repurposing collected from thrift stores for a year or so. I estimated I paid $42 for all, listed a month, had a few low ball offers, then sold for full asking price plus shipping. So this is a lot of 27 cashmere sweaters that are going to be used to make other things or possibly the buyer is going to repair them and this sold for $119 and yes that's a thing I have a link to my video about selling damaged cashmere on eBay for upcycling this video was made in 2017 but it's still relevant this has been relevant ever since I've been selling on eBay um, since 2003 so when you find cashmere that is slightly damaged but could be repurposed for something else and it's cost effective to buy it and put it in a lot that is definitely a great way to have um, like a side project going of other items you can sell for repurposing okay Janet paid five dollars at a thrift store for this doll the clothes belong to my kids took two months to sell took a best offer of a hundred and twenty dollars her limbs were very loose and I not working well, but buyer was very happy. This is an American girl, Kristen Larson doll. So she said she paid $5 for it, put some clothes on it, and it sold for $120 plus shipping. Okay, Eileen has an item that is not in the book department. She says, I pick up brass candle holders whenever I see them cheaply enough. This is the third lot I have sold in a year. They are popular for weddings and I wasn't going to list them because the wedding business is pretty much destroyed right now. My daughter is a wedding videographer and the pandemic has decimated her business. But I had 28 stashed away, spent about $35 total. So I decided to list them instead of waiting to find more for a larger lot. Listed for $139, took a best offer of $20 plus shipping, sold in two days. By far the fastest I have ever sold a lot of these. So her investment was $35 and she sold them on best offer of $120. So if you've got any random candlesticks around that you're not using, apparently they're selling right now, so get those listed. And we've got Jessica again. Paid $5, sold for $120. This is a Nexus conditioner and detangler. It's discontinued, which is why the price is so high. So she paid $5, sold it for $120 on best offer. Connie sold this vintage 1987 NBA Chicago Bulls 14 karat gold pendant. She paid 10 cents sold for full price of $125 and three cents in five months. And apparently she got this at the Goodwill bins. I'm guessing must have been a jar of jewelry maybe that she assigned a 10 cent cost to. She didn't elaborate, but this just goes to show you that stuff is out there. People think, oh, I'm never gonna find any 14 karat gold. I'm never gonna find anything valuable. You don't know, it's out there. These people are finding it. Here's the proof right here. Deanna picked up at Goodwill for $25, sold for $125.55, took about three months to sell. This is a uh, pair of cowboy boots, size 10.5 Stetson Western cowboy boots. And we've got Kimberly Furman again, paid $1.50 for thousands of vintage slides. These 
10 of a nude Polynesian maiden sold in a seven day auction. So her initial cost was probably pennies because she paid a dollar fifty for thousands of them and this lot sold for a hundred and twenty seven dollars and fifty cents people love to collect those old vintage slides that you play in the slide projector um, it's just it's collectible so if, when you see those and they're cheap enough definitely experiment with that crystal paid seventeen dollars at a local auction house sold for a full asking price of $129.99 in about a day and a half. This is a vintage Griswold iron skillet. $17 sold for $129.99. Okay, Brian paid $6 at an estate sale in October, sold for $134.99. This is a vintage U.S. flag. Okay, next is Suzanne Keene, who sold this men's fossil watch for $137.19. She got it at a thrift store for $6, had only been listed two to three months. Next up is Wendy Kruger. She paid $3 at a church thrift store for this cotton scarf. It sold for $140 plus shipping. Took five months. And if you think about it, this is really pretty amazing that all of these non-essential items are selling for so much money. It's just all about what you pay attention to. Okay, Jen. Kids outgrew their Wii. Took one day to sell. I also sold the games in lots and sold a few separately. So this is a Nintendo Wii console system. She sold it for $140.41. And Jen and I have been doing eBay about the same length of time. And she's like me, whenever you buy something, save the box because when you're done with it or your kids are done with it, then you can resell it and you'll have the box. Teresa paid $2.99 at Goodwill. It's been in my death pile since last year got it listed last week and it sold in three days for full asking price. This is Jack's Golden Tea Home Edition. So it's like a virtual golf thing it looks like. $2.99 sold for $149.88. D. This was my husband's from way back. We were cleaning our closet he tossed it at me to throw in the donate pile, but I decided to look it up first. Glad I did. Sold in five minutes for $150 plus shipping. It is a vintage 1986 world tour punk rock band t-shirt. So free, sold for $150 in five minutes. If that doesn't motivate you to get your stuff listed, I don't know what will. Brian paid $10 at a garage sale in February, sold for $149.99 to a very excited zero feedback buyer. This is a polo Ralph Lauren men's denim corduroy and wool lined trucker jacket. These do very well. We've got another we. Lynn Merritt said she's had this Wii since 2009, got on the bandwagon to sell old Wii stuff, took one week. So this was hers. She grabbed it, listed it, took a week to sell, and it went for $150. Now we've got Tanya, part of a lot I bought from a local online auction. This was about a dollar of it, listed for $275, no comps, but the movie isn't easy to find anywhere. But of course, almost no one has a Cartravision player either. I figured though that maybe it would be a display piece for a surfing collector. Had a bunch of people make offers around $20 during the six months it was listed, and she finally sold it for $150. Okay, here we have a baseball starter jacket. 
Brian paid $15 from a Facebook post in October. Had no idea where to price, so listed high at $199.99 and took an offer of $150. Janae paid $20 at a discount store. This is a discontinued model with a gluten-free setting. This is a Hamilton Beach home baker bread maker. So $20 and she sold it for $150. Courtney paid 50 cents each for these at my local thrift and they sold in about two weeks. This is a lot of magazines called The Organist. There were 16 magazines in here. She paid 50 cents for each so pretty low investment there and sold them for $150. We've got Jessica Rice again. I told you this was going to be the Jessica show. She paid $6, sold this for $150. It is a vintage Laura Ashley woman floral dress. $6, $150. She did really well with dresses this month. Okay, here's a fun item. Kimberly got this from Facebook Marketplace for $10. Had it listed for a while at $150, raised the price to $175, and within a couple of days got an offer for $150 that I gladly took. Not only was it a zero feedback buyer, but an international one as well. Don't be afraid of either. This is a new with box vintage 1985 Ronald McDonald phone. So lots going on with this item. It's vintage, it's collectible, it's McDonald's. It was on Facebook Marketplace so somebody was just getting rid of it. 10 bucks and she sold it for 150 and I do also want to encourage you to don't judge these zero feedback buyers. They're not all bad. They There's a bad reputation out there and bad information about all zero feedback buyers or scammers. Well, everybody has to start with zero. Everyone, even you did. So sometimes you're going to get that. And this is part of doing business is taking calculated risks. Zero feedback buyers are just people like you that want to buy stuff. That's what you need to remember. Rosanna found these boot forms at a garage sale for $3. Had them listed for about two weeks and accepted a best offer of $165 plus shipping. So these are wooden forms that you put down in your boots when you're not wearing them to help them maintain their shape. And if you ever watch Downton Abbey when they're cleaning the boots, you will see a whole bunch of these lined up. Okay, now we've got Kelly picked up these at Goodwill right after Christmas for $10.93. Had my son-in-law sharpen them since he works at our local ski lodge. He didn't get to them until right when ski season was about done. Had them listed for about two months, sold for full asking price. And this is a pair of skis that sold for $169.93. She paid $10.93 for them, and they sold even though ski season is about over. So here's another seasonal item that sold pretty much during the off season. Lorraine purchased this skin toning kit at an estate sale for $5, sold in one day for full price of $175. Linen closet or medicine cabinets, my favorite place to find high dollar items for cheap. This is a New Face Trinity Facial Skin Toning Device. $5, sold for $175. Now we've got Jenny, paid $5.99 at a thrift store, sold in about a month. I usually find these flashy men's shirts in the women's department. This is a creme de silk men's shirt, size 2X to 3X, and it's just beautifully embellished pretty design flashy is a great word for that <laughs> $5.99 and it sold for 180 
And now we've got the book lady again, Eileen paid $50 for this antique cardboard toy village at a live auction right before the quarantine was enacted. Listed for $289 and accepted a best offer of $189 plus shipping. Took two months to sell. 1897 antique pretty village set. Rip Van Winkle. Oh, how about that? So $50 sold for $189. We've got Brian with a Nintendo 64 Ice Blue controller with three games. Paid $32 at Goodwill in January. Sold for $199.99. Susie from my personal stash that I have never worn. Took best offer of $200 after three weeks and sent to someone who had one like this as a child and had lost it. So this is an antique bohemian rose cut cross pendant. Was from her personal stash, so zero cost. Sold for $200. Rachel paid $35 on Facebook Marketplace. It sold within a day for $200 plus $20 shipping. Disney Tinkerbell Music Box. Isn't that gorgeous? $35 and sold for $200. I love how sellers are finding new ways to get inventory during this time when thrift stores are closed and garage sales and estate sales aren't really happening. The stuff is out there. You just have to work a little harder to get it and be more creative in how you get it. But again, this is the proof right here that high profit items are all around us. It's just a matter of taking the initiative to find them. We've got Alona again. Her mom found this set at Goodwill for $10. It sold for $209.95. This is a Williams Sonoma serving bowl set, five pieces. $10 sold for $209. Brian paid $5 each for a bunch of World War II board games at a garage sale in March. My last garage sale day before all this craziness happened. Took an offer of $205 for this one. $5 sold for $205. And we've got some more items by Jessica. She found some Skechers Tone Ups for $15 each and sold them all to the same seller. So it shows, it looks like there's three pairs here. One that went for $220, one that went, and then two that were combined for $380. So those Skechers Tone Ups, Shape Ups, are great sellers. And here's another one from Jessica, bought for $5, sold for $225. Hervé Ledger black dress, it's very cool looking geometric pattern there, almost a zebra look to it. Okay, moving on to Jen, had originally listed at $279.99 for a year, raised the price to test and then ran a sale, paid $14.99 at Unique. Caught my eye as I was headed out the door, did a 180 and went back to the checkout. This is a Lindbergh motorized plastic model kit. She paid $14.99, sold it for $225.59. And now we've got Janice, another watch. Lots of watches sold this month. I noticed watches and bread machines. This was part of an estate buyout several years ago, so it's basically free to me now. Sold on auction that started at $9.99. Vintage Omega Automatic Watch. It looks like it's not working. And it sold for $228.50. Savannah paid $10 at a local thrift shop, came home and tested, and it worked. Listed for $300 with free shipping sold after a few back and forth offers for $240. It will cost me $40 to ship. 
so my profit will be around $185 after fees. This sold in less than 24 hours. I'm very pleased. I could have waited and probably got more, but with such little cost to me, why not? And this is a bread machine. I do not know how to pronounce that, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> But it sold for $240. She only paid $10 for it. Nicole, this was in my death pile for probably three years. I was so afraid to list it because I was afraid it might be fake, even though it looked incredibly well made. Since I'm in quarantine, I took the time to send detailed photos and pay for an authenticator. They said it was real. Took best offer of $255 plus shipping. This is a Burberry men's trench coat. Mark Sherrill, my sale of the week, paid $48 at an estate sale, sold for $260 plus $17 shipping. This is a vintage 60s hams beer lighted sign. $48 sold for $260. Heather found this brooch on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks, sold on auction in seven days for starting bid price of $299.75. And this is a fun Roadrunner pin. Looks like it's sterling silver. So $20 and she sold it for $299.75. And you may ask yourself, why would someone put something that expensive on Facebook Marketplace for so cheap? and there's lots of reasons. First of all, a lot of people don't want the hassle of eBay. They don't want to have to wait for their money or deal with learning how to do it. They're going to take that quick 20 bucks for whatever reason they need it. So don't think that these items aren't out there waiting for you because this video shows the proof People are finding things for cheap and selling them for a lot of money just because they can. <laughs> I mean, there's really no other explanation. Um, most people aren't going to take the time to learn eBay. I know this for a fact because I've been teaching people eBay for many, many years. And I'm sure a lot of you have been in the situation too where you've got a friend who wants to learn and you try to teach them and you spend time with them <laughs> trying to help them learn and then they come back with oh this is too much trouble or I don't I don't have time to learn all this or that's just too complicated and all these reasons so we are really in the minority even though there's millions of us we're really in the minority of regular people who take the time to learn how to do this because most people will not or they won't stick with it and this type of sale is proof of that so I want to encourage you to keep an open mind and understand that these things are going to pop up in front of you all the time expect it look for it and it will happen alright we've got Melanie this is the last lot of Mrs. Grossman stickers I had from a large lot of scrapbooking items I purchased last year from a former Creative Memories consultant. I've already made my money back so these are all profit. Sold in four days for best offer of $300 with free shipping. And this is a huge lot of 1,000 plus sheets Mrs. Grossman scrapbooking stickers. Stickers for $300! This is totally not essential, but somebody wanted it. Okay, another bread machine. This is, uh, Brian had two of these, so this one sold for the lower price of the two. The story is that he paid $60 at an estate sale in February and sold the first one for $3.99 plus shipping. And then the second one sold for $349.99. So two of them pretty much alike that both sold for over three hundred dollars and we've got KC this was free to him and he sold it for three hundred and eighty dollars in about two hours this was a unique deal with a good relationship at a thrift I was told it was free in unknown working condition and to pay later if it actually worked 
it honestly didn't work when I got it home and I told them my findings so they said I could keep it. This machine sells for $800 to $900 working and I had dreams of refurbishing it myself <laughs> but decided I'm just too busy to do it. Still have all the accessories which I kept separately and will list soon. This is a Jura Impressa coffee espresso machine. He sold it for parts or repair so it doesn't even work and he sold it for $379.95 and it was free. And then here's the other bread machine that Brian got that sold for $399.99. So I'm just wondering if during this stay at home order if people are taking up all these hobbies and bread making must be one of them because that's really not a very sought after item. Bread making machines in fact they're kind of hard to sell unless you're selling them for parts but not so. Pamela paid $20 for two vintage North Face ski jackets and sold them in about six months for $400 minus shipping. North Face Vintage Bold Color Block Ski Jacket with Gore-Tex. So 20 bucks for two of them and looks like this one here alone sold for 400 Okay and now for the winners of this month's supersize sales. Although if you're selling anything on eBay you're a winner but I'm just trying to make this a virtual award. <laughs> so we've got Kay who bought these at Goodwill for six dollars and took a best offer of four hundred and fifty dollars plus shipping. These are Carmina boots, men's charcoal suede dress boots. Six dollars and sold them for four hundred and fifty. Second place is Rick who sold this item in two hours. This is a case of 12 Mad Balls, Footballs, Rubber Monster Toys. This sold for $499.99. And someone asked, help me understand, what do you mean you purchased a container for $1,200? Why do these sell for so much? And Rick answered that he bought a storage container, like a storage unit, full of 1980s novelty goods. A lot of people like to collect monster toys. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so if they're going to pay that much for these little toys. And then our winner this month is Nancy Tracy who bought this paperweight for $37 on Facebook and it sold for $553.21. This is absolutely not an essential item. It is a um, art glass. It's collectible and someone basically gave it away for nothing on um, I'm guessing Facebook Marketplace. But here you go. This is what eBay is all about right here is you just never know when that next big score is going to show up in front of you so you want to be on the lookout for it all the time. Okay that is it for this month's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Would love your comments below and please subscribe if you have not already so that you don't miss any more of these videos with great things that you can make big money selling on eBay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.